Super Mario Odyssey is still fantastic. And I'm also a huge fan of Mario Galaxy 2. Referring to both of these games at once, I've always wondered how it is that Mario can breathe in space. We've seen him jumping around and hopping about multiple times in outer space or on planetoids now that most certainly would not have any air. These small galaxies in Mario Galaxy have some simple explanations. It's a cartoony Mario Galaxy with their own alien atmospheres, you know? But then what about the moon in Odyssey? It has the old rabbit on the moon pattern so it's basically our moon and our moon has no atmosphere at all let alone one of oxygen so what's going on what is different about the moon in super mario odyssey well that is exactly what we're going to try to explain today on noggin Throughout all of Odyssey, there are little hints that the moon is the final destination. It's present in most of the other worlds, and the camera loves panning to it during the cinematic scenes. Plus, the rabbits come from the moon, and there is the ever-iconic rabbit on the moon thing. Plus, there is of course the whole wedding theme. Bowser is trying to forcibly marry Peach, and where do you go after a wedding? Your honey moon! And apparently in the Mario universe, having a wedding on the moon isn't even that strange. It's just a bit extravagant. I mean, there is a cathedral here on the moon, so it must have happened a few times at least already. But how then are all of these people and forks and mermaids on the moon without helmets? Well, everyone except for the dog. <laughs> He's just so cute. I just wanna, <laughs> I wanna crush him. <clears throat> Back to the matter at hand. Maybe the cathedral just has oxygen in it, right? Well, that could work, except for the massive hole on the top. And then there are also people hanging out outside of the cathedral post-game. So we have a problem right off the bat. The moon has to have an atmosphere of its own for Mario and these people to live. And yes, before you say anything, we do know that Mario breathes, because he needs to surface from the water every so often to catch his breath. Though, then again, what if he just can't breathe water? Like, like he doesn't necessarily need air, he just needs not water. No, no, that's really stupid. Hmm, right. So that must mean that Mario's moon has air, and that means it must have an atmosphere. So we'll have to determine what it is about Mario's moon that is letting it keep its atmosphere. Huh. Well, there is that giant carrot. It's probably not that. But after the Bowser fight, we learn that the power moons apparently are made out of these old metallic blocks that are scattered throughout the world. They are essentially solidified power moons, I guess. I really had no idea what they could be until we went to the moon and that strange metallic stuff was everywhere. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks! Moon rocks! Moon! Power moons are from the moon! It's in the name! And the power stars apparently are made from the same material, at least in Odyssey. Maybe that's a game mechanics thing. So what is this metallic substance? Perhaps that could shed some light on our atmosphere problem. It might not sound like it right now, but you'd be surprised where logic trains go. Well, inside of the moon, we see large clusters of silver, goldish, cubic, crystalline structures growing out from all of the walls. My immediate thought was that they could be pyrite or fool's gold. The name pyrite is Greek in origin, meaning of fire. The reasoning was pyrite, when struck, will spark, making it a great fire starter. Iron Pyrite has a lot of deep spiritual symbolism, too. That is, if you believe in all that hippie new age mumbo jumbo crap. For starters, one of its symbolic strengths is vitality, which is like literally almost every other rock, too, but, but it is also a shield element, whatever that means. But looking more into Japanese origins, because Mario is a Japanese game, it may be a power source in the Mario universe due to the fact that Iron Pyrite was one of the very few sources of iron in Japan during the Iron Age of history. Meaning that anyone who owned iron or iron pyrite would have more power in their military. And that's on top of it being flammable and used for early firearms and wheel locks. And I know that might seem like a bit of a stretch, but there really isn't anything else relating to both power and the moon. Though interestingly, if humans ever were to mine the moon, it would probably be for mining the more plentiful helium-3. We humans haven't quite figured out how to use helium-3 during fusion on a smaller scale yet, but it is predicted to be a fuel source in the future, both for use in spacecraft and for powering cities. Just like the moons. Are the small power moons really just liquefied helium-3 canisters? Huh, there's a mini theory for you. 
But how can this moon have an atmosphere? <laughs> right, right, back on track, come on. Well, once we travel inside of the depths of the Mario moon, we are confronted by tides of molten lava. This lava suggests, or rather blatantly tells us, that the moon is not so dormant. Let's compare our current moon to this Mario moon for a second. Our moon has a very thick outer crust, about 60 to 100 kilometers. The Earth is only 30 to 50 kilometers, depending on location. Estimates can vary, as we haven't exactly gone to the moon that much. But recent studies and theoretical calculations based on stuff you can't even feel without a million dollars of equipment are starting to say that the moon has a solid inner core with a liquid outer core along with a small, soft mantle, which is not at all comparable to the Earth's inner mixture of soup. Really, the Earth is mostly soft. It's like a giant water balloon, but with mag instead of water, and rocks instead of rubber. I just described a planet. So if our moon has liquid parts to its core, why isn't it erupting? Well, that's because of the mantle, which is almost solid on the moon, whereas it's almost completely liquid on the Earth. And this is the part in Mario Odyssey that we see, all blorpin' and hot, soupy stuff. We are still trying to figure out how and why the moon is the way it is, but many believe that it was a small planetoid that crashed into Earth during its formative years, and has since started to orbit the Earth. Over the billions of years, the moon and the Earth have cooled significantly. This is due to simple thermodynamics and the rule square cube law, meaning the surface area of smaller planets in comparison to their volume is high, creating a quick cooling ratio for the moon. So because of the moon's small stature, it radiated its heat away much faster than the Earth. But what does this all have to do with the atmosphere, I hear you asking? Well, it's actually pretty awesome. The Earth's liquid core swirling around its solid inner core, which is two-thirds the size of the moon itself, creates an electromagnetic field around the planet. This is also known as a geodynamo, which is a fun word, <laughs> geodynamo. So what does this magnetic field do? Glad you asked. Firstly, it's what lets you live. How convenient. Secondly, the field helps protect the Earth from solar winds, almost deflecting them as they come from the sun. This, in turn, saves our ozone layer. The ozone layer helps protect us from tons of harmful rays and stuff, but it also helps hold on to all of what we call air on the planet, giving us our stable atmosphere, keeping it from being washed away. Though some planets don't need this liquid motion in their core to create a magnetic field. In fact, Earth is rather special in that regard, sharing this trait only only with one other planet, Mercury. Mercury's field is rather weak though, but new research states that it was once as strong as the Earth's. Mars, on the other hand, uses large portions of magnetic material on and in its crust to create a weak field. But a magnetic field is not strong enough to hold on to an atmosphere on its own. There are many celestial bodies in our solar system, and some of them are just plain old bullies. I'm looking at you, Jupiter, with your magnetic field bigger than the sun. You compensating for something, eh? Hmm? But really then, the moon's size is a real factor in its atmosphere. The mass just isn't there. Our moon may be the second most dense object in the solar system, only beaten out by Jupiter's moon Io. There he is again. Always gotta one-up us, don't you, Jupy? But density doesn't mean anything unless you got the size to go with it. But then... Even Pluto has an atmosphere, so what gives, Moon? Maybe it's just the Earth using its gravity to steal what little the moon has. Hmm. Well, back to Mario. So in Mario Odyssey, the moon has tons of volcanic activity rather close to the surface. This would lead me to believe that the moon in Mario is still hot internally, unlike our own, and thus has seismic activity. If a planetoid has a liquid outer core and a solid inner core, it could create a magnetic field strong enough to hold on to an atmosphere, generally. There are still a few problems with this theory, though. As the moon is tidally locked with Earth's stronger gravitational pull, so it does not spin, thus it would not have an easy time creating currents inside the outer core's liquid. Thankfully, that doesn't make it impossible, though, just... hard. But, for some reason or another, that is the defining difference here. Mario's moon has a bunch of underground activity which gives it the power it needs to form a magnetic field and hold on to its own atmosphere. So there isn't quite as much Mario magic going on as one might initially assume, and that's pretty awesome. 
So I hope you enjoyed this look into the Moon Kingdom. Which kingdom should I look into next? And until next time, please be sure to never stop using your noggin. And a huge, huge thank you to absolutely everyone who has watched this far into the video. You are fantastic. And I do want to say that even though this particular Mario series isn't doing as well as I had initially hoped, it's still <laughs> turning out to be great. It's not all about the views and watch time or whatever. It's about how much you guys enjoyed it, specifically you that are still listening to me ramble on. Uh, more great Mario stuff coming out pretty soon, so stay tuned.